Oh. Man, I'm ready to go to sleep right now. <laughs> Obviously the prevailing winds come from behind me, but uh, it's still... You've got to be acceptant of the fact that as you sleep on it overnight, I'm quite a big lump, you know, but the bed will sink. But uh, with this straw, I can't even feel the um, timber frame underneath it, you know, so this is a bushcraft bed. This is my interpretation of it. I've made it without a uh, cutting tool or an axe or anything like that. I put the tarp up because it just started to rain, but this is another uh, roach homemade tarp just whizzed it up on the sewing machine it's seven feet long five feet wide blizzard survival sleeping bag here tonight mate i am in clover let's talk about the blizzard sleeping bag then that's how it comes in a uh, vacuum sealed packet instructions on the front say build yourself a shelter if you can open the packet stretch the bag width ways roll it out stretch it long ways and very simply it's like um it's like space blanket material but it's with corrugations so if you imagine corrugated space blanket material i'll show you a photograph of it uh, drop it in the video for you but um, the heat retention on this product is absolutely excellent i'm going to uh, drop in some more photographs a few more statistics on exactly what it does and how good it is but uh, very simply the uh, product was tested at uh, arctic warfare school by the royal marine commando and they signed it off to 14 degrees below zero so that gives you some indication of just how good this product is so the pack you can see there is 16 centimeters long it's 11 centimeters wide and it's four centimeters thick unpacked it's 1.2 meters wide and it's 1.6 meters long comes in three colors this one is green but it uh, comes in silver orange and the green that we're just about to open so this is the packet that it comes in the packet's got a red tab on the bottom that's where you tear it and that's where you open it like i say instructions are on the packet so uh, put those in your pocket just in case you'll need them for later Here's your emergency sleeping bag. So the instructions say, unroll it. 1.6 meters long. And then what the instructions say is pull it kind of sideways. thing about the blizzard uh, survival sleeping bags it's apart from excellent heat retention they're wind and waterproof bag's got a draw cord in the top 1.2 meters wide so it's big enough even for someone of uh, of my size but this is our sleeping bag let's put it in our shelter That is looking really cosy. Wow, so here at the farm they've got a flock of uh, 90 ewes. They've divided that flock up into uh, two and they're lambing uh, sort of four weeks apart. So this is the first four weeks, half the flock, and so far they've got uh, 37 lambs. Uh, a couple of those have been kind of orphaned because uh, the ewes didn't have any milk 
but uh, everyone here is incredibly pleased. It's a very exciting time. And they've got another, uh, I think, probably four weeks of lambing. I think some of them are still to, uh, to get uh, Tiny little one. Where's your mum? This is a very useful trick. So it's uh, just a, an animal feed uh, cattle trough, really. But um, you know, it's contaminated with uh, uh, potentially sort of animal waste. But this is a brilliant place to get your water to. Bit of a stopcock as the water comes out. That's pretty much clean drinking water. Obviously. Uh, you would be sensible to kind of boil it and roll it boil for three or five minutes and treat it if you uh, have any doubts. But um, brilliant little trick, you know, open countryside. Normally you have these cattle animal feeding stations. So this little area of the farm is the rural care centre. So during the day, um, during the week, they have colleges and courses on agriculture and organic farming that take place and they use this as a kind of briefing room. Um, they have got uh, kind of chicken brood, rabbits, you know, um, a sort of breeding centre if you like. So lots of uh, children come uh, during the week. But this room is empty every weekend and uh, the management of the farm have been kind enough to uh, let Roach have it uh, Saturdays and Sundays. It's got, uh, it's got electricity, it's got the wood burner in the corner. So we're gonna spark that up. And um, this is probably where I'm gonna be doing my uh, kit and equipment reviews before I take them out in the field. And uh, you know, open the packets, open the boxes, put them up, get them out, play with them. But this is where I'm hoping to give you all the uh, specs, you know. So, um, like I say, this is our little shack. This is the rural care centre, and you're seeing it for the first time, just like I am. I've got my uh, um, kind of woolen fleece on already. I can feel the temperature uh, falling. I've got my uh, woolen fleece on already. It's only uh, probably a little after four o'clock, but I can feel the temperature starting to fall. So uh, it's the old, old really, you know, if you get cold, just stay cold. So um, I'm going to uh, stave off my uh, core temperature dropping for as long as I can. And as soon as I uh, feel that um, it's starting to get a grip of me, then uh, that will be the time that I light the fire. But apart from that, um, all ready for my nighttime routine. I'm just looking across the field, there's a lovely couple of rabbits over there. Okay, dinner this evening then, I've been at a farm shop, I've got a couple of uh, potatoes, pick myself up a uh, nice big carrot, I've got a couple of sausages, so I'm going to make mashed potato with uh, carrot, a couple of sausages and a couple of eggs, I've got a little bit of bread left over from yesterday, so uh, that's going to be dinner this evening. I'm going to get it on early because uh, I've got a funny feeling it's going to get dark, I want to get settled and uh, maybe get the fire lit, sort of already uh, bedded down nice and early for a, uh, a night in the blizzard so the bag. but uh, this is dinner, going to get it on. Because I'm just mashing this up, you know, you want to uh, cut the pieces up quite small. The other thing is, cut them all roughly the same size, that way they cook at the same speed. Uh, if you cut sort of small bits and big bits, all that happens is the small bits cook first and the uh, big bits are still hard. It's got to be enough for me. Had a little bit more meths and I've got petrol, so I thought I would uh, um, cook the veggies on the Trangier stove 
and um, then I'll just uh, put a frying pan on, do the sausages and the eggs on the dual fuel, sorted. So a little system seems to be working, that's my veggies on, frying pan for the eggs and the sausages, there they are, funky little egg holder, and uh, a couple of uh, slices of organic bread that was left over, but uh, just got to wait now, 20 minutes, half an hour, that'll be dinner. Got the sausages on, just finishing off the carrot mash. Service! Couple of eggs, last minute. Well, the uh, pork and herb sausages are lovely. The eggs are just a little bit overdone. Mm. The carrot mash, well, it's just got a little bit of a twist to it, but it's lovely. bit of um, organic bread on the plate just to use it up really but um, it's going to be a cold night tonight so um, I've whacked in a few extra calories in hopes that uh, it helps keep me warm. <coughs> well that was quite a lot of dinner. Forced that last little bit down. I'm hoping that um, you know, that's fuel that I'm going to be burning to keep me warm tonight. But uh, that's it really, you know, up in the morning, strike camp, head home for Sunday with the family. That was just right. So that's me kind of uh, wrapped up and pretty much put away. Uh, Tidied everything down, just got to put the uh, rooftop tent down and uh, put the cooker away and the table on the side that will go in the rooftop tent, so that's all packed really. Uh, got my fire lay ready, if I uh, get cold during the night I'm going to light that up. Um, truck's packed and ready to rock and roll. Uh, when I wake up in the morning literally just got to uh, break down the uh, top and um, uh, put the straw back where I got it from. Everything's laid out, you know, the blizzard sleeping bag, I've made my uh, bushcraft bed, so uh, everything's ready for me to uh, hunker down, you know, got my head torch in my pocket. Uh, that's about it really, so a couple of bags in the morning. Should be about a 10 or 15 minute uh, puffo. And uh, we'll be heading home for family, uh, time with uh, my beautiful girls on a Sunday. Uh, the, uh, there's a sleeping bag, by all accounts is an excellent bit of kit. I haven't used one in a while, you know, Frankie Prepper um, had one uh, out a few weeks ago and he is uh, singing its praises um, uh, to the point where he actually uh, bought another one off me and uh, so did Lone Wolf, so I guess if they're um, uh, investing in them, you know, so fair chance it's a good bit of kit. I'm just on my kind of uh, walk around the perimeter before I uh, uh, 
snuggle down and make myself comfortable for the night. It feels like it's got a bit colder, you know. Uh, I don't know why the temperature's dropped a few degrees, maybe, but um, it feels a bit colder. Um, that's it, really. I've uh, absolutely uh, uh, really enjoyed myself this last couple of days at the farm, and uh, they've made me uh, incredibly welcome. Uh, so if anyone from the farm is watching, thank you for your hospitality. And uh, probably the next time I'm going to be back is the prepper meet, uh, 24th to the 27th of July. I was out for this couple of days and uh, I had uh, six people come and find me. So I've put posts on Instagram and um, as you know, Instagram is in actual time pretty much. So there was a couple of people that jumped in a car, drove for an hour walk around the woods just to come and find me. <laughs> and I'm incredibly humbled. Uh, thank you very much. It was lovely to uh, lovely to meet you and have a chat. And uh, uh, the other folks that uh, come and found me. Um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing you on the uh, 24th, 27th of July for the prepper meet. You know, it's going to be back here. Farm management uh, at Church Farm. Ardley are uh, winding up, they're going to have all the obvious, you know, the, uh, uh, the toilets, the um, kindling piles in the, in the woods and pretty much everything we had last time, um, just a little bit more of it, you know, because uh, we're hoping that um, there's going to be uh, a few more of you. So I think 124 people have already booked tickets, uh, it's uh, a 300 prep a meet. Um, we put it in the school holidays because quite a few people wanted to bring uh, the kids. So um, I'm sure my wife and my own um, children will rock up. Uh, uh, there's plenty to do at the farm forum for sure, so uh, um, all good, nothing bad there. Um, I'm going to finish this uh, perimeter walk round. This is me. Uh, Dare say there'll be a couple of uh, posts or updates during the night just to let you know how I'm getting on. But failing that, I'll uh, see you in the morning. It's been a funny old day today. I had this uh, bed built by about half past nine this morning, you know, and all of my admin has been bam, 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 bam. It's been really on the ball, you know. I've had a good walk around the estate. Uh, been up to the uh, farm a couple of times. Um, they uh, have allocated me a cabin and I had to uh, go and have a look at it and I'm sure you've uh, seen that but that was absolutely great. The people at the farm are being really accommodating and uh, the uh, 300 prepper meet 24th to 27th of July should be great. You know, they're pulling out all the stops for us and uh, I just hope that um, you know, we don't let them down, we don't embarrass ourselves, but uh, they certainly have been uh, incredibly, uh, like I say, incredibly accommodating. Well, I'm, I'm in my knitted sleeping bag, on my bushcraft bed, and mate, I feel ready for a snooze. If it gets really cold, I'm going to light the fire. Fire lays already. So, uh, like I say, if it gets cold, I'll be sparking that up. But uh, the wind's died down. There is a sort of chill in the air. But, um, you know, I think we're going to be fine. So, uh, that's it, really. I'll check in a couple of times during the night. Failing that, I'll see you in the morning. And uh, sweet dreams, everybody. Well, wow, morning, everybody. Night in the blizzard sleeping bag. I have to turn around and say, they're warm. They are warm. They're not kind of red hot peachy warm. <laughs> and uh, my tarp, I've, I've kind of pegged it right into the ground because I'm trying to stop the wind coming underneath it. You know, so um, I am laying up against it. This isn't like a normal tarp. This is a wax cotton. So if you get water on the outside, you don't get water on the inside but you do feel the cold of it you know so a couple of times i found myself pinned up against the top and uh 
Uh, I could feel the this sort of strip of me getting a lot colder than the rest of me. <laughs> my bed was uh, absolutely great. Didn't have any problems at all uh, feeling cold on my back or my side. You know that was uh, that was uh, all good. Uh, uh, if anything, I kind of woke up this morning uh, feeling a little bit nearer my age. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing in the world like a night in the woods without a fire. <laughs> I was kind of determined to um, to kind of test it out on its own merit. And obviously, you know, if I was to have had a long fire, the temperature under here would have been over 40 degrees. And, you know, what was I could have probably been fine without a sleeping bag at all, you know, so... I uh, hummed and ahed uh, two or three times through the night about lighting the fire, but I didn't. What what I decided to do was to get up, you know, and uh, had a sort of brisk 10 or 15 minutes of uh, kind of exertion and uh, then got back in it. And uh, that, was, um, that was how I got through the night, you know. Uh, it was kind of 12-hour night. It was sort of, you know, 7 to 7, really, I suppose. But um, that was my test but uh, uh, so don't expect you know a four season sleeping bag by any stretch of the imagination even though the uh, statistics will tell you you know weight for weight it's got a 27 point whatever it is tog you know and I've given you all the technical information but um, oh, it'd save your life without question you know and if you were caught out in the hills or someone was sick or injured you know, it's a perfect piece of kit without question, you know. Um, like I say, you know, don't compare it to the most comfortable night you've ever had in the woods because uh, you'll, it will fall short, you know. But, um, uh, did it, you know. My, my, like my trick was I had to get up and, like I say, had a couple of uh, uh, 15 or 20 minute um, uh, sort of exertions, uh, little bit of kind of running and jogging around and warming yourself up and then once you bring your core temperature back up you get in it and it retains that heat a bit better so um, that's my night in the blizzard sleeping bag just got to strike this uh, little top and uh, gonna put the straw back with the uh, pheasants and um, my bed I'm just gonna put back in the brush pile didn't light my fire pit so I haven't got to clear that away and uh, I pretty much packed the truck up last night in ready for the off this morning so uh, it's back home to have uh, Sunday dinner with the family so I guess that leaves us with um, if you've liked this film you know please uh, uh, give me the thumbs up like subscribe comment and uh, if you're watching me on Facebook follow um, but uh, have a great weekend, as always. Any comments? Love to hear them. Back soon. Wow, now I've got some heat in me. <coughs> I can uh, talk to camera. Uh, you can see how I've uh, slept on that bed. You can see that in the, on the far side it kind of scoops up slightly, which is right where the tarp was, you know. Like I say, I was um, trying to stop the wind whipping in from underneath the tarp because the wind was from that direction. But uh, uh, you get a better idea of how I've slept. I have to turn around and say the bed in itself was quite warm. You know, there were a few cold spots in the bag, especially if you lean against something, you tend to get this sort of strip of cold that penetrates the bag. So um, that's a bit tricky. You know, obviously underneath. Uh, where I was um, uh, pressing, compressing the bag, you know, I had the bed. Uh, but on the sides, uh, if you lean against something, the, the, the cold seems to penetrate. But uh, that was my bed. I'm just about to strip it down. But uh, um, that was, that was, I haven't slept on a bushcraft bed in a long time. And that was far from uncomfortable. <laughs>